Okay, so I am wearing the same outfit as I did in my last video, but considering the fact that I know that nobody's gonna watch that Halloween video, nobody would know that this is the same outfit. So anyways, here are all the books that I have read recently. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I thought I would do another read 2022 romances and let you guys know which ones are the good ones. I love these videos and I love making these videos because I typically read only traditionally published romance. I feel like a lot of romance booktubers do not read traditionally published romance and they only read indie romances. So welcome to this channel where it's a breath of fresh air, I guess, where you guys can learn about the books that everybody tends to hate. So the first book that I decided to read is this one from Alicia Ray and it's called Partners in Crime. Now with Alicia Ray, sometimes I have a love-hate relationship with her because some of her books are just a great representation of South Asian representation. I enjoy it because of it, but then I don't like the plot because like the plot usually deals with social media, like her other series that she did with Avon. And I just don't like books about social media and how our characters are just learning about how to stay viral on social media and things like that. So I was interested in this new one called Partners of Crime, which is a romantic suspense comedy and it's about these two people who are once upon a time in love and it's a second chance romance obviously so what happens is that he is the lawyer for her family and then someone in her family passed away and he deals with the will and then they see each other again you know they still have that strong connection but definitely there's like a lot of mystery to like as to what happened between them to force them to break up in the first place and then after like that pivotal scene, something happens where both of them are captured by these villains and they don't know what the heck is going on. So they are literally escaping from the villains. They are trying to solve the mystery behind what the villains are seeking for and they are running away and they're gambling and this is all taking place in Las Vegas and they're doing all these like sneaky handed tricks, meeting mysterious people, trying to put the pieces together so that they can solve the riddle that's happening with their lives. And it was a fun story in most parts, but I just wasn't a fan of the storytelling. I don't like it when we are introduced to our characters, that they are a blank canvas and that we know nothing about the history of our characters. And we only learn more about who our characters are through chapter by chapter by chapter, if that makes sense. So in, the, in other novels, you know, what you tend to expect is that you know who your character is, you kind of have a little bit of backstory of our character from chapter one and you kind of know what she does and what is she doing and what happened in the past. But this one felt like Alicia Ray was just kind of dropping like nuggets every single chapter. It just felt like Alicia Ray was just writing tidbits of our characters every chapter afterwards and it was just frustrating a lot of the times because I felt like she was just using it to manipulate the story in any way that she wanted and I felt like it was kind of cheap. So this one I ended up giving it a three out of five stars. It was interesting but it didn't keep me that much interested into the story because since I didn't know the two characters I didn't believe the attraction that they had for each other for our hero and heroine and so therefore I lost interest. So the next book that I did read is this one called Lucy on the Wild Side by Carrie Ree and now I like Carrie Ree or Carrie Rhea uh, a lot because I liked her first debut novel that she did write with Berkeley Romance and that book is called The Wedding Ringer and now Carrie Ree decided to pick a heroine doing something that I've never thought I would be interested in. So our heroine is a zookeeper. I know, I don't even like animals. I don't like the zoo. But I thought this book was really interesting. So our heroine wants to be like a senior zookeeper. So she is kind of like making sure that she's doing a really good job at the zoo that she works at. But then what ends up happening is that there is like this very famous celebrity zookeeper's son that came. So picture like, you know, one of those Discovery Channel hosts just comes to the local zoo and takes a job there. And she ends up putting her foot in her mouth and she ends up insulting him and saying that he probably doesn't even know anything about animals and like, you know, little snide comments here and there. And he hears all of it. So it's not really a good start. It's like a love-hate relationship, obviously, and they both have to work together. And they are in the process of like um, helping these animals. And it's just a really fun story. But oftentimes it was very 
tough to get through because our heroine dealt with a lot of mommy issues. Like, her mom was just not supportive when she was growing up. She never had a really good motherly figure in her life. And then now when she sees how her mother is treating her younger sister, who is, I think, like, a lot younger than her, and how the mother is treating her a lot differently, um, she's resentful towards her mother because she's like, if you could give my younger sister that kind of life, why didn't you give that life to me? So it dealt with, like, a lot of that resentment and her mommy issue a lot so it was very difficult to stomach a lot of the times because it was like fair and that really impacted her in the in her life too as well because she felt like that she didn't want to be a mother because she felt that it would be unfair to her children if she can't give that level of love and admiration and adoration um to the children that she would want for herself. And then she holds a lot of stuff against our hero because our hero came from a very wealthy background and his mom is famous for, you know, saving the rainforest and like helping all these animals. And it's very, she's just a very stubborn character that I sometimes really want to throttle her because she was just pissing me off. But overall, I still enjoyed the book and I gave this one a three and a half out of five stars because it dealt with a lot of difficult issues. I think Carrie did a really good job at kind of talking about all these issues and concluding it so that both characters can have a happily ever after. So I gave this one three and a half out of five stars. So the next book that I did read is a historical romance. This one's called Something in the Air by Suzanne Enoch. Now this is probably maybe my second Suzanne Enoch book so I was kind of a little bit hesitant going into it because I think the first one I read I just didn't really like it but this one was really interesting. So this one follows our heroine and hero who had a marriage of convenience like seven years ago and they lived really good lives. Like they lived very separate lives but then what ends up happening is that she might lose her mansion or her townhouse or her residency or her land or whatever because she does not have an heir. So now they need to produce an heir. So they have to like be forced and being put together again so that they can try to save this townhouse by having a baby. But the problem is that her husband's like a stranger to her so it's very hard and then it's also even more hard because she actually lied so she told everybody in her family that hey you know what we already have children we have two children one boy one girl the beautiful children so sad that you guys didn't get to meet them yet because when they were born they were kind of like a little bit sick so then we never really brought them to you guys to show you but then if you guys want to see them now you guys can just come and see them so she dug herself into this hole and it's like this web of lies situation and she's breaking it out to her husband saying like you know I lied and now we need to go find children and then her husband's like why did you lie so now they're trying to hire children to pretend to be their children and they first go to like a small family like a poor family and then the family is like demanding so then they're like okay screw that family we're gonna go to an orphanage so they go to an orphanage and they pick up one girl one boy who are ends up to being like brothers and sisters and they are rambunctious they are just very cute they're very funny because they know that they hit the jackpot with um this whole play thing where they're pretending that these characters are their parents and so they make up like this whole contract and stipulations about like this is what you need to give us this is what you need to provide to us after the contract ends and this is like yada 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 so they all have terms to their agreement and it's so hilarious and so cute and you kind of already just know that they're gonna end up as one big happy family because once like the lie is exposed and everything you just kind of know that they're gonna accept these orphans no matter what because they're already in love with them um but this one I gave it a three out of five stars the reason why I only gave it a three out of five stars is because I felt like it focused a lot on the children and I like the children but if focused so much on the children that I didn't really focus on these two people who were just freaking strangers and who were just married. So I wanted more of the romance and I didn't get most of it. So three out of five stars. Will I keep continuing reading Suzanne Enoch's novels? Yes, I'm very excited to read her new books with St. Martin's Press. Okay, so the next book that I did read is this one called From the Jump by Lacey Walden. And now I like Lacey Walden's novels. Um, or at least I did like her first novel that she did write last year, which is called The Layover. And I thought From the Jump would be a really fun kind of like summery vacation vibe novel just like that one. So this one involves our heroine who found herself to be part of a 
very elite group of friends in university. And she grew this like really close bond with these people who are clearly mm, different classes than her like they are super elegant super rich they are they grew up in a different lifestyle she grew up in a humble beginning she worked her entire life and she is just happy to be included in this group of people where she doesn't feel like you know where she feels kind of like she belongs so she befriends everybody but you quickly realize that her friend group is very toxic and a lot of the people are not worth writing home about, especially her girlfriends. Her girlfriends make like weird packs with each other going like, you should not fall in love with any of the guys in our friend group because that would just ruin the friend group and that would just be not great for us. I don't think that's a good friendship. Like, I don't think you are a good friend if you're literally telling your friend not to have an opportunity of pursuing her crush or like falling in love with someone because she wants to keep the friend group tight no matter what. Like, I feel like that's kind of selfish. So I rolled my eyes a lot of the time. And unfortunately for me, this whole book was on the premise of her having feelings towards a friend in the friend group. So that's a friend to lovers romance. And they go on this like, group hangout trip vacation thing and like it's just that so i ended up giving this one a two out of five stars i just hate catty girls and i hate weak heroines who let catty girls take over their lives so i just didn't like this one while i continue reading lacey walden's books of course it's just this one i just didn't like the premise of maybe you'll like it if you like watching a wallflower kind of um become a stronger heroine by the end of the book and stand up for herself but this one's just not for me okay so the next book that i did read is this one called funny you should ask by lisa sussman and this is the last book that i actually want to talk about in this video so funny you should ask <laughs> a lot of popular booktubers here have talked about this book and they liked it but i did not like it reasons why I did not like it include the fact that it's a celebrity romance. I don't like celebrity romances. I don't care for it. But this one was just really far stretched. This was like Chris Evans fan fiction. And I read a lot of reviews on Goodreads that actually talked about how this is like a fan fiction novel or not even. This is actually like a book about something that actually happened in real life with Chris Evans. And essentially there was this like GQ interview that Chris Evans did with a reporter and Chris Evans was depicted as this flirtatious man that brought her to his house party that like took her to dinner that kept touching her and kept flirting with her and kept doing all this shit with her so she wrote this interview in GQ and she depicted him as this flirtatious man so it was kind of like you know girl calm down like it's Chris Evans like why would you know he want you no I'm joking but this one is essentially the same thing. So our heroine, I think she's like fresh out of college too, which may also makes it unbelievable. And that was like the main gripe that a lot of reviewers had was that because she was fresh out of college, she didn't really have that much experience. And she was already put on this like major expose piece where she was interviewing a celebrity who was the new James Bond, I think. And then she does this whole like thing with him and she has a special connection with him but then 10 years later they meet up again for a continuation of that interview and it tells the story in like past and present so you're kind of just like jumping in the past where she is slowly falling in love with him and then the present where she thinks that he is a distant stranger and that he she never knew him at all which is very true so i ended up giving this one I think a two out of five stars because I just girl girl like get girl just girl I just did not like it I just felt like it was just not good it just not good especially because it's based on that Chris Evans like GQ article that actually happened and published and it was just I don't know it's just it just sounded like silly fan fiction to me and I just I don't like that so I'll give it two out of five stars do I recommend you read it yeah sure if you like celebrity romances but I, I don't so uh, so yeah but anyways that is it for all the books that i have read recently that are 2022 romance releases and i hope you guys enjoy this video and as always like and subscribe or follow me on goodreads and instagram links are down below and i'll see you guys again later in a new one goodbye